Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Brian. This is Tech Therapy. Thank you so much for joining me as we take a look at the 42-inch LG C4. A lot of muscle in a very small form factor. Now, usually I am in the heavyweight division. You can tell by the 83-inch LG C1 behind me. But I've always wanted to check out these smaller displays for you as they are perfect, not only for daily viewing, but for PC gaming, gaming in general, and your workflow. Without further ado, let's take a look at the LG C4 Evo at 42 inches. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, let's do it. LG C4 Evo, 42 inches. I'm in the heavyweight division, so to review or check out panels this size is rare, but I do want to do more of that this year, as many of you are interested in both the 42 and 48 inch, not just as TVs, but possibly monitors for both workflow and for gaming. We're going to fly through this unboxing. The reason I am doing an unboxing on this size C4 Evo is simply because the form factor is different, the stand is different at these smaller sizes, and that is important to many of you and how this stand would sit on your desk and or in your home theater. Here is everything that is in the box. Screws, battery, AR blaster, manual. Remote is very similar to last year's. You do have the two separate legs that sit out wide, but at this size should not be an issue. The 42 and the 48 inch are different from the other C4s. We'll show you the design. Your four full bandwidth HDMI 2.1. We'll show you how to put the stand on only takes a moment cable is not detachable unless maybe you pull that cover off which i am not going to do and there is your hcmi inputs and you saw the ir blaster that came in the box nvidia g-sync we also have 144 hertz which i will show you later in the video which for me is a massive deal now the 42 and the 48 inch have some differences other than design they both lack the brightness booster technology of the larger sizes that are in the 55 65 77 and 83 inch you'll place this little tab in then it's just two screws Use a very long screwdriver. It can be tricky to get that bottom screw in. So put the screws in first and you are good to go. Back to the brightness booster that it's lacking. That has not just been left out. It's due primarily to its pixel density of a size that small. Whether the brightness booster is not possible or it makes little sense with that pixel density, that's most likely the reason. You have some cable management here where if you wanted to run the cables down and out you can looks very good i love the design keep in mind that an oled this size will look thick at the bottom or and even at the top simply because it's not that tall where you'd have the same back however you'd have the taller panels leading from the top so you'll have the very thin edges but you will have a thick back and there is how it stands very glossy panel we are also in a very very bright room this is my home love the design as we go through the setup i will actually let the music play because we will talk about the audio you have a two channel 20 watt here versus a 2.2 channel on the larger sizes so we'll let this sound play out so you can see us enable the ai picture pro and the ai sound pro
wanted you to be able to hear the sound you can actually see the ai picture pro does make a difference it does show what it offers in terms of upscaling with the ai upscaling and the a9 ai super upscaling you know, going through the setup quickly showing you the new web os 24 which has been changed quite a bit ui is very different and i'm going to have you just watch me go through the setup and how i actually set it up meaning going through turning off um, the energy saving really important to do these steps and not just to leave it out of the box though i'd say even foregoing some of this display did not get dim even with uh, the power saving on but for me it's very important to turn these settings off as I mentioned, the 42 inch has a 2.0 channel 20 watt system versus 2.2 40 watt on the larger sizes. So that's just the 42 inch alone. We do have a retooled A9 AI processor Gen 7. It is retooled, meaning it has been updated. And the upscaling is excellent. Now keep in mind, I also have the C4 probably two weeks earlier than when it was released thanks to our good friends at Value Electronics. We'll talk about them in a moment. Meaning there was not an update out of the box. Though things do move around very quickly. Also when connecting an HDMI, always have to enable the inputs for a deep color. I would do this on all of the inputs whenever you connect a device. You have your 4.4 pass-through, you have your deep color, and also Dolby Vision PC. We also have a Dolby Vision Filmmaker mode. Now you'll see some reflections due to the bright room that I'm in. Just the nature of a glossy panel. i rather have that and retain the high contrast ratio and the crisp um, image than don it down with a matte finish. The minute the picture comes on, it's absolutely stunning. Now you're gonna see me go through the settings a lot throughout this video. These videos are not short. They are meant to show you each and every preset. Auto power save is the setting that, or the preset I should say, that it ships in. What's interesting about auto power save is that it looks very similar to standard. And it's actually slightly dimmer than standard and it still looks great. I would leave it in this preset. That's how good it looks. Now for LG, one of my favorite things with LG is flexibility of image. They are very accurate out of the box. However, the presets do offer you the ability and the settings to customize the image however you like. Always love that flexibility about them. LG doesn't get enough credit for being accurate. Easily calibrated looks fantastic and again the brightness booster missing is due to the panel's pixel density at these sizes it's not just being left out and the c4 at this size is not just a carryover of the c3 though it doesn't have the brightness booster it is a bit brighter than last year's smaller sizes and you can tell now keep in mind that I'm checking out the C4 after seeing some of the best TVs in the world, including the G4, which I think is an absolute monster. And the C4 still impressed me. This will be one of the overlooked TVs because of the G4 and because of the competition from the QD OLEDs. But I will tell you with LG, it's about trusting the company that's been making OLEDs since the beginning. And there are some issues with QD OLEDs and what panels are being used and things of that nature. Don't worry about any of that with LG. Their panels obviously created by LG Display. The picture looks amazing even in this room where there is a lot of light. Now the WebOS has been revamped. I love this chat bot feature where you can actually ask questions using the mic on the remote. Now the artifacting you see on the screen is just my camera picking it up in these conditions. That is not anything to do with the screen. But you can ask it questions, 
my screen is too dark, my screen is too bright, and it'll run through these answers or it'll just answer it for you. You can either keep asking through the microphone or go through. You can also set up profiles for people in your family. I don't spend enough time on webOS, things of that nature, but those of you that want a specific operating system, much less clutter this year and you can customize it. You won't have unwanted advertisements other than the streaming services you have or the LG channel um, aspect of it. But I do like this feature being the chatbot. Very easy for people to get through the settings. Another big change is Dolby Vision Filmmaker Mode. Fans of Dolby Vision, Dolby Vision is going nowhere. I watched a presentation from them at LG headquarters. They have one of the longest relationships with LG. LG has the best implementation, in my opinion, of Dolby Vision. This Filmmaker Mode has been added. A lot of you wanted Filmmaker Mode and wondered why it was never in Dolby Vision. What I like about LG's implementation is still flexibility of image within Dolby Vision. You still have a lot of the features you can disable and enable where not a lot of things are grayed out as you've seen with other companies. The minute Dolby Vision is enabled with some other manufacturers, a lot of the flexibility of image disappears. It is all still intact here for the most part. Shadow detail is still retained in Dolby Vision. It just isn't darker on LG. We're here with the Spears and Munsell disc. Now, special thank you to Robert and Wendy Zong for supplying the LG C4. Please consider making your next AV purchase through them. Check the description below for all their information. Let them know that I sent you. To have the C4 early was a surprise. We're on to the G4 next. But the C4 is very cool and I'm loving it. Again, the picture quality, very impressive. Even though I've seen the G4 and spent a lot of time with it already, I still love the C4. Now the personalized picture wizard is back. It's a very, very cool feature. Going through each of these pictures, you pick your preference and it'll create a preset for you. There is one caveat though, and it's something I learned through my time with the C4, is it is a powerful setting. It is picking your preferences. And it's global, meaning you will see it in every mode, including game mode. If personalized picture mode is activated, you will be locked out of your gaming presets. This happened to us last year. We didn't know it was the picture wizard doing it, but it's a cool feature. And once it's enabled, it'll give you another preset for you to choose that is your preference. As you can see, it is global, meaning that in Dolby Vision, it is now added. Now, as you go through the rest of the presets, what I want to show you is while you still have your vivid preset, I'm here in Dolby Vision, by the way. So you have your standard, vivid, filmmaker. I'll show you in a second what it looks like to go into the picture wizard. You will lose some of your flexibility, which makes sense as the AI is doing it for you. So if you were to go in and change dynamic tone mapping or anything like that, you would undo what it already did. So it kind of locks you in to this one preset, which makes sense because basically it's a preset you chose to create and you can still go in and customize the other ones. Now going into HDR, it was just in Dolby Vision HDR showing you that it is global. It shows up here as well. And there it is. Now, if you find that when you're in gaming, you are locked out of your presets, meaning you only have standard, what it's doing is it's giving you the picture wizard preference in that whole game mode. So if you find yourself not being able to choose those settings, come out and then manually go in. And you'd see it above game mode, it'll say picture wizard. So what you would see is you'd see dynamic tone mapping is gone. 
all that stuff is in it is missing and then i'll show you when you go into just the next preset over which is standard it's all back we can see that on the expression or I should say the picture wizard you know summary it talks about cool and you know warm and vivid and it, it tells you what you picked now going into the advanced settings here you can see under brightness that your dynamic tone mapping and those things are back you're also able to disable dynamic tone mapping and you can adjust the curves yourself 1000 that's 4000 that's 10,000 you can create your own tonal curve which is such a cool feature I think many of you will use. Go into SDR here. We're not looking at an SDR dip in brightness. Again, the artifact you see on the screen is my camera, not the screen. Now in SDR, you end up with ISF, you end up with sports, you have other presets that are not available in the HDR presets. So again, flexibility of image. SDR is very important to many of you. And I did not notice the picture getting darker in SDR gaming, which was an issue last year. I will check more into that in my gaming specific video coming up in just a few days. I'll say it again. That's just my camera in the room that's picking up that that's not on the screen. But SDR looks great. Upscaling great. Now, while it's not the Alpha 11 of the G4, the processor has been retooled and is excellent. LG's processing is very good, so is their upscaling. The AI upscaling and super upscaling does a great job. And actually, this year, those AI upscalers are making a difference. As you saw in the menu when we started. Now again, running through the image, the reason why I want to show you these menus over and over is how each preset works. Going through the most accurate doesn't serve anyone but people that want the most accurate. I want to cover everyone, everything you want to see, vivid, standard. These are excellent presets. LG's Greg Lee had him on for an interview. He is the head, uh, the senior product trainer. Had talked about sometimes even using Vivid, knocking down the color temperature to warm and the sharpness for very bright room. I tried it, it actually works. So Vivid is actually usable in that scenario. Standard is a cool preset. Now I wanna show you again here with this very punchy demo from our good friend, Jennifer Gala. A special shout out to Jennifer Gala and HCR Super Channel. There's my personalized picture profile and you can make, you know, this uh, praying mantis look like a cartoon all the way to making it look very natural. Love cinema, cinema home. Again, the presets are very different and each of these presets can be customized other than your personalized picture wizard. If you want to customize that one back out and redo the picture wizard. Just be mindful if you can't alter those settings, that means your picture wizard is on and you are in that preset. Again, another shot here paused to show you the flexibility of image. This is a very saturated image and look how different it can look with each and every preset. Now with LG, as I mentioned, They've been doing this for years. There is a trust to LG being in the OLED game and leading the OLED game for many, many years. The C4 has um, hit a lot of competition with the QD OLEDs out there that are at a very low price. The C4 is very competitive here. And definitely going to be a winner this year. Don't sleep on it. I already did because I'm looking at the G4 with the new processor and the very bright. Nothing about the C4 seems not bright. It doesn't seem dim. It didn't dim on me. But again, a flexibility of image, you're able to change the image as much as you like. Now, to me, that's very important is to be able to have the accuracy and the pop depending on the game 
film, streaming, anything, sports. Now, dynamic tone mapping, I actually like dynamic tone mapping a lot, even in gaming. But you also have HDIG, but the ability to go in and disable it and create your own curve um, to be able to take advantage of 4000 net content so things don't clip. That is something many of you, I think, will use. Moving into the PS5, Horizon Zero Dawn, Forbidden West. Now you'll see actually I locked myself out here. You see how standard is locked out. I am actually in the picture wizard now. This I'll disable later when we go into the PC gaming portion. You see right there it's in game optimizer below that you can see the personalized picture wizard you'd have to back out just going through the settings now in pc for 144 hertz boosts as i go through the hdig which hdig when supported is super important and i actually miss it when it's gone when it's supported it does retain the specular highlights and the specular highlights are actually excellent on the c4 but Again, with other manufacturers, I've missed the lack of HGIG. When it's supported, I always use it. That professional dynamic tone mapping or the tone mapping customizable option is also here in gaming. So you can still use it here to also make sure you don't clip if the games are brighter. It's awesome to be able to change that tonal range. Expression enhancer, again, a lot of ways to change the image. They are all here in game mode. I'll repeat again, the screen uniformity is great. It's just my camera that is creating that in this environment, that little help. Super impressed with what I saw from the PS5. Now, people have asked, is the 144 hertz boost available on console? You can enable it. It's not doing anything. It won't show up um, under, it'll say. Bar. It'll stay at 120. Which makes sense. The games can't go over whatever is dictated by the console and or game. It's not open like PC. Now what I love about the game optimizer also being able to change the black level, make things deeper. You can make them brighter if you wanna see a multiplayer shooter. But for me, it's all about, you can make different parts of the image deeper. I like this dark room um, toggle it does do it subtly. You can see the specular highlights are there. Doesn't just dim the whole image. Very smart option. If you ever have raised blacks in a game that has poor HDR, HDR implementation, you're able to dictate how deep the image looks. Also something I've missed from other manufacturers. You see it there with the black stabilizer. There's also another toggle where you can deepen that as well. There's other motion settings that you can use on this display that I'm gonna cover in full in my gaming, a separate gaming video where I can deep dive that, but very customizable. There is motion selling settings as well as smooth gradation you can use in gaming. Even OLEDs tend to remove a lot of that processing in the gaming. LG tends to keep it in, which is awesome. And super important as gaming should be as cinematic or as performance based as you like. I've said this before, pixel density is a real thing. Smaller display, cleaner image. I'm used to gaming on 83, very close. It was cool, everything looked flawless at this size. Now we're gonna move into 144 Hertz PC. 
Now, before you enable the 144 hertz, you can do that in the game optimizer. Make sure you go into the control panel of your GPU, whether it's AMD or NVIDIA. LG by default will bring you back to 4K 60. The game optimizer will then lock to 59 or 60 as far as FPS. You'll toggle down. It's not a customizable resolution or anything like that. It's there. It's just under the PC portion. And then 144 hertz, boom, flawlessly. Now you have to play games where your GPU can handle 144 hertz. I picked Doom 2016 as it is an amazingly optimized game where you can ramp it up, max it, and it plays incredible. Very smooth. You can see in the bottom, 144 hertz, 144 hertz frames per second, I should say. Now keep in mind the C4 has not been updated, so some of the stuff moves around a little bit slow in the menu, but for the most part it was very snappy. Going through the game optimizer bar, there's your black stabilizer, you can drop that, which I tend to, you'll see it here. While it retains the specular highlights, you can deepen the blacks. I like that on OLEDs, I don't want OLEDs to be raised at all. You can raise the white aspect of the screen as well without over brightening the whole thing. And you can save that to each preset will stay that way. Then you have one user preset where it's up to you. As I've said throughout the video, flexibility of image in every preset. Even the best OLEDs tend to leave this out when it comes to gaming. It's not because gaming is an afterthought for many manufacturers. It's because they think they're doing you a favor by leaving performance high. And hey, you can see everything. But there's a cinematic aspect to gaming as well. And if you're spending the money on an OLED, even a very large one, you still want to have a good image, beautiful image. You don't want there to be much of a delineation from your cinema standard presets to gaming. Other than input lag, you don't want the picture quality to change that much. You'd like to have a beautiful image. It is so smooth. Unfortunately, you have my window uh, over my left shoulder, so you're going to see that in this part of the video. Very fast, very fluid. Played for three and a half, four hours. Number of PC titles, no dropouts, no nothing. It was flawless in that regard. Now, is 144 hertz a big jump from 120 something you should chase? Typically, I would say no. However, being a bit of a hypocrite, I am a PC gamer. You want every single ounce of performance. That is an extra little jump that if your GPU can handle it, we're here with a 4090 from NVIDIA. I right away want to ramp up everything. Is it a massive difference? No, but being a PC gamer, you do feel that smoothness. You do want every frame. So 144 hertz, uh, very welcome. And here's the new uh, Horizon Forbidden West or new to PC. And there it is, 144 maxed 4K. And the difference is night and day from the PS5. As there is no dynamic upscale. Actually, this is DLSS. However, it isn't like a 1440p on the PS5 that's being kind of upscaled to NVIDIA's wizardry, but you are getting 144 FPS. And it's a big difference, night and day as far as its motion. It's not just performance, it's image quality is what frames per second is to me. Not just quick, fluid motion. Absolutely beautiful. Now, towards the end of the video, I know these are very long. I want them to be long. I will see the C4 at larger sizes as well, as well as the B4, G4, QNED. We're going to cover the entire lineup this year. I love going into older titles like Titanfall 2, 
Halo Reach, which you're going to see in a minute, and Gears of War. These are SDR. They still look fantastic. There is no dimming happening. It didn't get very dark or anything. Again, you can control a lot of that in the optimizer. Highly recommending the C4, not just for movie watching, sports, upscaling, streaming. WebOS is a big jump, much less cluttered, very customizable. The chatbot is also a great addition. The profile is a great addition. AI upscaling, awesome. And if you want to use this size for a monitor, both workflow and gaming, it's going to be unmatched as you're not going to see a G4 at this size, QD OLEDs at this size. And you don't lose anything other than pixel brightness again, which doesn't work at this pixel density, but at 42 and 48 inches, they can't be touched even by monitors. In my opinion, there are no compromises really being made from the TV aspect to the monitor aspect. And now with 144 Hertz gaming, really hard to beat and an excellent choice. It's very light. It sounds good enough. We'll also cover some of LG soundbars this year. Should have mentioned the sound earlier. Sounds good. Is very loud. Something monitors typically lack. And again, LG's processing is top notch, upscaling top notch. But I was blown away by the gaming portion where now I need this 144 hertz or 144 frames per second. What do you guys think of the LG C4? To me, it's going to be an overlooked TV this year, though it's their bread and butter, this TV that sells the most. Many of you are looking at the G4. G4 is quite a bit more expensive. It is their luxury lineup with the Alpha 11, but do not sleep on the C4. I think it's excellent. Again, and I've already seen some of the best TVs in the world of this year, even its siblings. And I love the TV. Easy to recommend it. What are your thoughts on it? Even spending time with the leading QD OLEDs, still love the C4. LG tried and true, been doing it for many years. Excellent Dolby Vision implementation, updated WebOS, excellent all around. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brian at Brian's Tech Therapy. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful evening. Take care.